So if you're someone that needs to cover long distances with a scooter and you're not particularly fond of standing for long periods, then perhaps a sit-down scooter is for you. This is the Orca Mark 1 from Voro Motors. It has a range of up to 60 kilometres, a maximum speed of up to 33 kilometres per hour. So in this review, I'm going to be taking a look at the design, the build, my road test, as well as my final overall opinion at the end of this review. So this seated scooter has 160mm disc brakes, front and rear, 12 inch tyres. Now because these are pneumatic airfoil tyres, they're not solid tyres, I highly recommend going with your favourite anti-puncture solution. Putting a half a bottle in each tyre will definitely help out and increase the reliability. So if you do happen to pick up say a thorn or a nail or something, it should seal it and you won't be stranded with a flat tyre somewhere. So let me just run through some of the features of this particular scooter. Well, it's almost like a bike really, isn't it? You can see we've got those two stands there, the stays that you need to screw in. That's where you place your feet. So there is like another version of this, but it's got another name. And that actually has pedal power. So if you did run out of battery power, you could pedal there. So the rear hub, that motor is 500 watts peak. That can get you up to 21 miles per hour. There is a kickstand, which is quite sturdy. It supports the 17 kilos that this weighs. So it's quite a heavy scooter. It has dual shocks. So we've got one here on the rear, as you can see. And then the front fork. So this does not have a lot of travel to it. So it's just for minor little bumps there. It's not for like riding up curbs or anything like that. Not that you would attempt it with this style of bike anyway, scooter. We've got plastic mud guards here to help with splashes if you are going to be riding through puddles and things like that. So the battery pack is located right in the middle. It's 15 amp hours and it will take approximately 4 hours to fully charge from completely flat. So the middle part right there, that also acts as a handle for lifting it up. So we have a large wide cushioned seat here with springs and just below that we have a light here. So this doesn't actually come on when you brake or flash or anything like that. It's just on all the time if you turn on the lights. The seat too is fully adjustable as you can see. There's a little latch here so loosen this off and then you can simply just lift this up and set it to your own height. The headlight at the front houses two powerful LEDs inside and even in daylight you can see them which is good for oncoming traffic if you happen to be riding say on the side of the road or along on footpaths people can see these lights. They are bright, they illuminate quite a bit of the path ahead of you but they're attached to the frame of the scooter here and not to the handlebars which I would have preferred. And for ease of storage the handlebars they do fold down as you can see so this means you can fit it into places where you probably wouldn't be able to fit a normal bike. As you can see, you can just fit in a large boot of a car or trunk. Now looking at the controls with the handlebar, so it's straightforward. We've got all different power modes here. So one, two, and three, all of them have different top speeds and power output. Number three is the most powerful. So this is for your climbs. We've got a horn right here. I'll give you a sample of that. That's a funny noise that it makes and that's our control for the lights. Now the build and the plastics used here is a little bit cheaper and definitely feels a bit cheaper than the Voro Cruiser scooter that I reviewed from them. And as you can see we do have this phone holder right here and it does have a USB plug here so you can slowly charge at I think the output of it is only 2 amps your phones and the holder here. Again the plastics used here a little bit cheap. And then we have our color display here. So this displays simply just the speed, a trip, meter, and the voltage. So clicking this, you can see the volts at the moment, 54 volts. And this is the battery indicator. So each one of these represents 25% battery. And when it gets down to the red one, then you've only got 25% left. And that's probably time then to charge it. And here you can see the trip meter but it, after about five seconds or so it reverts back to showing your speed so to accelerate this is right here the grip you just pull this down it will accelerate straight away without actually being on the scooter so you have to be careful when you touch that the scooter also has some anti theft features right here so you can lock it you need a key in fact to turn it on so you can see the key here will turn it on it comes with two remotes with batteries so using this you can lock it unlock it and you can also sound the alarm to locate where the scooter is and even remotely power it on if you wanted to do so. So you have to remember every time to unlock it, otherwise if it is locked right now and I go to turn it on, you will then hear the alarm. So this is handy for some people if you're going to be leaving it in the city, you're going to lock it up. It does have this anti-theft thing as well, so it won't power the motor 
it will try and block it as well so people won't be able to just push off and ride off with it even though you can't pedal okay so i'm fully charged here i've got my gps maps on just to track my distance and everything and turned it on right now but i cannot make out anything on the screen in direct sunlight which is a real shame you can just read it you need the shade though so that is a real shame there so i've got it on mode three okay so a nice big empty car park to test this out right now so full acceleration it's a little slow this is nowhere near as fast as their cruise scooter 500 watt motor getting up there so very hard to actually see the speed right now according to this i am doing 37 kilometers per hour so that's pretty quick so I test the braking out right now pretty good stopping there with those disc brakes i did lock up the rear just then you probably heard that so for those of you out there like to do a few skids and things you can do that with these brakes so i'm taking my typical route here this is along the coast of denia last rotors testing out the scooters that I review and we'll see what kind of range I can get with this pretty demanding if you haven't seen my other reviews there's a few climbs there's some bumpy roads and whatnot but so far it's soaking up the suspension and the cushion seat with the springs in it all the bumps quite well let's see how it tackles this short climb it can handle 30 degrees so that was not a problem at all quite quick Okay, let's see how it handles going up this little bump here. So if I just lift the front wheel up, down, and then over this curve as well. Pretty hard going, but it is possible. All right, so I have my first climb that I typically test with my scooters. A little bit of gravel, bumpy road as well. Let's see how it handles it, but this has plenty of grunt. And there's a couple of cars coming too, so I've got to take it a bit slower. But no, not a problem. So it's in gravel now, you can see, suspension, making a little bit of noise. I can see it is working though. Paving with all these rocks, clattering away that suspension. But it's doing a better job than a lot of scooters I review. So I made it right to the end of Las Rotas and looking at the battery it's still stating that it's uh, somewhere between 75% and 100. It's handled the ride well and no real problems. Okay so according to the trip meter here I've done 26 kilometers and that has about 50 to 75 percent battery i would say an estimate of about 60 percent battery life left so it looks like the claimed 50 to 60 kilometer range is definitely possible with this scooter right here which is great so the range seems quite good about 26 kilometers i managed to get for a loss of around i would say approximately 40 to 50 percent battery is decent so the ride comfort with the 12 inch wheels is good it's a lot more comfortable than say the cruiser that i reviewed which you have to stand up on and if you're not interested in standing for long distances for example if you need to do say 30 kilometers or 20 or something like that then sitting down of course is a lot more comfortable now the suspension on the front only soaks up small bumps really it has about one inch of travel only the rear is about another inch and it is quite portable the fact that you can fold it up of course i've shown that in the video here that it's quite easy just to fold down those handlebars as you can see so to place that into a car or something like that you can remove the rear seat too but it is quite heavy this is a 17 or 16 or so kilo scooter so it's quite heavy so the performance with the acceleration is good but it's still not as fast as the cruiser model that i've reviewed from voro which i found to have very good performance on that one it's very powerful this is 500 watts peak it's enough for most people will handle climbs of up to 30 degrees which is good the braking on it as well is great because it's got the disc brakes on there so no issues with that they're cable disc brakes so they're not using hydraulics like your typical mountain bike so they're not going to perform as good as those but overall i think for what it is the performance there is good so overall it is a nice scooter it is an expensive scooter as well and i think 
there's a few things that do need to be improved they can improve on the lighting on the rear i think it's just not bright enough uh, the headlight down here doesn't follow the handlebars so when you move around it would be nicer if it was placed here on the top that i think would be a lot better there the other thing is the display a big complaint with the display i cannot read it and make it out in sunlight at all that's an area of improvement the phone holder here is quite cheap the plastics used the same goes with the controls here so it's not particularly high quality some of the components they have used and i feel for the price they're selling this for that they really do need to improve on a few things here thank you so much for watching this review i do hope to see you back in the channel bye for now